in real bad shape right now with my diabetes, you know, because I, I'm protesting this whole crap. I'm not going to be moving into a facility with less security because that's also what she brought up was we're not going to be having guys with guns and bats. I mean, like, really? Because we don't, you know, because the clients requested that. Really? You respect the client's opinion that they should have less security for predators and, and criminal behavior? I mean, in a place that's less secure than the YMCA? At least at the YMCA, we can go into our rooms and, 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 and stay, you know, here. But now they're putting us in a facility where you have four foot divided walls and anybody can, you know, have access to you, you know? And mm -hmm. so, you know, I just find this very inappropriate. And again, I, I, you know, I guess I'm gonna have to just go back to the street, sick. Because that would be really Well, like I said, we can, we can definitely, we'll still be working with you. We can do some referrals. You can stay in respite for a week. We can look for a placement. Um, so you won't necessarily be on the street, but I... I'm going to be sitting up here waiting a whole year just to be bouncing from place to place to place. Because I think right. it's quite insulting that I, I, I've done nothing but, you know, help the security at the Y, you know, help these people when they had fights down there, break up fights, so that they could screw up my case. Because I really do think that somebody is sabotaging my case. And again, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this up with the judge up. Well, maybe, maybe you can talk to Lillian and ask yes, her. Um, to her, because she's one of the people that housed the sexual predator who came in from out of state. Okay, so it does not reflect very highly on her, because this guy came in from out of state, from Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and to come to New York so that he could have housing in front of New Yorkers, and I'm in here longer than him. Yeah, I mean, that, I could see exactly why that would be frustrating, but I'm wondering if... Um... Well, I'd like to know how these cases are being chosen. Because apparently, yeah. apparently the housing coordinator, Ms. Rashida, states that there's plenty of male house level two housing. So mm -hmm. really, nobody approaches me about this? You know, this is, this is somebody sabotaging my case on purpose. And well, again, I mean, you know, I, I will bring this up with the judge tomorrow morning at Silver okay. Court, and okay. we're going to see, you know, if they will conduct an investigation because, you know, there's no reason why I have not performed, I have not done anything uh, conduct of becoming, I have not had any any fights, I have not been, you know, doing stuff here that that, that is not supposed to be done. You know, I right. follow the rules and I follow the procedures, all because I right. had. Complaints about sexual well, I know from the there, there was a housing interview. You did have a yeah, interview. It was a shared apartment. And that, but it was not, shared, right. right. That's not supposed so to I'm be wondering, shared apartment for first time. Are you, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 clients. Yes, right, I'm wondering if, if the... If the, if the if sexual the, predator can get a studio apartment, mm -hmm. then that meant that there was a studio apartment that would have been available to me that mm -hmm. I didn't get for one reason or mm -hmm. another. Okay, mm -hmm. so somebody mm -hmm. sabotaged my case. Now I don't know if it's my caseworker, or I don't know if it's how, how it's how it's dulled out here, but I don't think that sexual predators should be number one catered to. Okay. Oh, uh, I agree. Okay, you, you don't put sexual predators in unsuspecting neighborhoods. Okay. Yeah. You, that's that's that you're, you're playing with fire. Because right. if it all goes back to if it all goes back to to to. Who placed them there? It's going to reflect very poorly upon these organizations. Sure, sure, that that makes sense. Um, uh, let's let's definitely talk more um, about your options. If you if you are interested in understanding how referrals are made and things like that, I'd be happy to share some of that information I'd like with to you see too. I'd like to get into House as an emergency situation because I'm not going to be bouncing around. Every once, every week. I, I, number one, I find that very inappropriate mm -hmm. because I follow. Well, we can definitely we can do that referral for you. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if it will be before the move, but we we will do that referral. That makes perfect sense. Storage, and I have no means of mm -hmm. getting it in there. So okay. So Mickey and mm -hmm. I. Mickey and I can definitely drive up, help you move some of the, your items, um, and... the hospital because they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, uh, enter me in the hospital here for my diabetes because it's getting, I almost collapsed yesterday, so... 
Telling us that we we have to throw away stuff. This is this is the general attitude of this place. They have no storage facility in this new building, uh, even though I know for a fact they do have it. But they're telling us people have to throw away stuff that they built up for themselves. I think this is really a Nazi attitude, and uh, the way that they speak to people, it's just like they I care less. You know, mm. they speak to us like we're, we're children. You know, and, and I shouldn't be in this program because all I have is PTSD from 9-11. You know, mm. and you would think somebody would pick up the file and say, this guy doesn't belong in here, get him into another division or another program. Mm. You don't put somebody like this and then insult the shit out of him. You know, that, that's dis disrespecting people. You wouldn't do this to a veteran. That's true. Okay, so. I mean, I think, I think... You put, you put the system itself in front of a veteran? The system, it, I'm sorry. the system itself is, is it perfect? Um, no, no, no. So I, I definitely it's, it's, understand it's your... That status. You have staff members that are complaining about being sexually assaulted. It's not just clients. These are staff members that are complaining. Happened twice right. last year that it's on, it's on their job. Uh, you know, when you go on Google and, and, and you type in, you know, general job and they'll tell you how they like the job that they're working on at CCS, it's right there. Mm. It's right there. All these complaints are right there. And, it, it, you know, it boggles the mind how they can continue to do this and say, well, you know, it, you can't protect you a thousand people. Well, then you give them stuff to protect. Give them a light. Give them, give them a taser. Give them a gun. You know what I mean? You know, don't have people doing this career and put them in unsafe conditions. It's enough that they have to interview these potential clients, mm -hmm. you know, in, 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 in who knows what neighborhood, and you're not giving them anything as a precautionary measure to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, sending a fireman into a building without, you know, fire gear, you know, right. into a burning building. That's ridiculous. And then saying, well, we can't protect you. You're putting right. people in danger. And, and, and you're acting complacent. Even when they complain to you, about these incidents, you, you, you know, you, if you don't take care of your troops, your troops are not going to stay very long. You know? Of course, so, of you know, course. It, it's a career move for people, they want to move up, but they want to do it in a safe manner. This is a very dangerous, potentially dangerous occupation. It was like, you know, the, the shelter uh, 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 manager that got killed a few years back, you know, mm -hmm. the guy who shot her. You know, how, how unsafe conditions, how, how much of an unsafe condition do we have to, you know, be in before somebody takes notice that, hey, you know, somebody needs to really look into this. Right. You know? um, so, I, I hear you. Mickey and I will definitely come up. Well, I think it, it'll be helpful if we can talk more in person. Um, and we will get that referral started for you to the Andrews. Um, what I want to just be clear about is we usually don't do transfers, so what? So we'll see if something can be done about it because it is a, a different circumstance. Um, but I'm glad to hear that you're willing to go there, and we can definitely see what we can do to make that happen as soon as possible. From the fire to the frying pan, you know. And I mean, going from the frying pan to the fire, but you know, it beats being around people, you know, staff members who condone this type of behavior. Because mm -hmm. it's, 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 you know, you're going to harbor, you know, these type of dangerous people in your program and act laissez-faire about it, then you're playing with gasoline. And it's only mm -hmm. a matter of time before somebody gets really hurt. Right, and of course. So, you know, you, just, you know, we need to, you know, I don't know what's going to happen at court tomorrow, what's, you know, what the judge is going to do, because this is all related. My case is all related to what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And they're going to ask me, you know, what type of living status am I having here, you know, and I'm going to be like, I haven't had a chance to even go on one meeting because they want to continually put you in a place where you've asked not to go and first time clients are not supposed to go. First time clients are supposed to either get a one bedroom apartment or a studio.
which is what's been given out to these perverts. I want to know why they want to put me in an SRO, why they want to put me in a shared apartment, because it's like they don't really want to deal with my case. Mm. And, and I'm sorry, that's retaliatory. It is. That, 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 that is exactly what it would seem like. But, um, you know, we definitely want to want to do some more work and talk a little bit more with them and that make sure, exactly. you know. I'm, I'm hoping that you have the gumption to defend someone who's, who's apparently, like you said, it, it is a retaliatory scene. You know? Of course, of course, of course. But I, 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 like I said, I think we should talk more in person. I'll explain more to you about the about the process and i think you know we'll we'll see if you if that changes anything for you yes, but i i have to go now i understand supposed to happen now at 1 30 Sorry. but mickey and i will definitely no that's okay mickey and i will give you a call to see where you are um later on in the week because i know you're planning on going to the hospital to see if you're there if we should meet you there or at the residence and and then we can take it from there okay yes ma'am thank you very kindly for your time I of course. Taking time off from my situation. Anytime. And like I said, we are going to work on that and who's referral for you. I can't promise that it'll be before the move or right after, but that is something that, that we can we can work on. Um, and I think that's a very reasonable kind of place to go next if you are, in fact, not moving with the Kelly, okay? Yes, ma'am. I appreciate your time and assistance. Okay. No problem. I will talk to you soon. Be well, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Bye. This conversation was on April 1st, 2019 with Miss Ashari Edwards, supervisor for Goddard Riverside, who referred me to the CUCS Kelly program, which is a totally different organization. And as you can see, Miss Ashari also agrees that it seems like it's a retaliatory action that my case has not been dealt with. And if it does come out to be that it is a retaliatory action, then there should be an investigation into this matter as to why sexual predators are given housing, how, you know, how they're in a co-ed operation with men and women, uh, how crimes against female clients and staff members have been swept under the rug with no police report. And this really is, a, you know, very inappropriate. You know, just because you're in a rush to get money uh, for each client that you place, there should be a level that if you're going to have someone who does things like this. Now, I feel that everybody should be given a fair chance, you know, to be given, a, you know, assistance but if you have people that have a behavioral tendency towards sexual assault rape they should be moved immediately and put, placed into an all male shelter or if they do commit these crimes that the police should be notified and that these people should be dealt with in a criminal manner because you don't reward criminals with housing and hold people back who are not committing any crimes, who, who have proceeded, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 through the procedures, you know, and, and somebody with a track record, you know, for community service, you know, you don't put sexual predators beyond, uh, before, sex, before, you know, people who've served their country or, 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 or perform positive, you know, background in community service. This is, this is abhorrent. And again, this is, you know, all related to a racket, that this is, this is what it is. It's a racket. You know, you, you pick up poor people, you, you hold them in stasis, and then you throw them in housing. Uh, if they are criminals, if they are murderers, if they are, you know, just because a person isn't a registered sex offender, the only reason why they're not registered is because they have not been arrested and convicted you still have sexual offenders that are walking around out there. And when you have these businesses and these, these rackets uh, keeping it silent, you know, you're acting as a collaborator. You're acting, uh, you're harboring sexual offenders. You know, if they commit these acts on your premises and you don't report it to the police, 
or you don't allow the client to have, you know, some of these female clients, they're, they're, they're inebriated, they're drunk, they're on drugs, and some of, many of them have m- mental issues. And if you allow people with handicaps to be attacked and you don't report it and you don't conduct yourself in a proper manner as to defend these potentially handicapped female clients who are being accosted, uh, assaulted, sexually raped, and you cover it up, then you're a collaborator. You should not be in business, and you should be held criminally liable. To be continued.